Hi, this is Mark Lugos, Group Content Director for Ophthalmology Times. I'm with Dr. R Rudy Newitz of the Netherlands. He just moderated a panel discussion on refractive surprise, the big taboo. D Dr. Newitz, can you explain to us what is the big surprise the, and why is it such a taboo? So the big refractive surprise actually is an unwanted situation that you can encounter when the patient after cataract surgery comes into your office and the optometrist has measured in a, uh, a refraction that is uh, really off target. So it can be either minus one, minus two, minus two and a half, um, but it's at least not conform the expectations of the patient. And in those cases, of course, you have to come up with a solution. And the solution can usually uh, be found with a thorough discussion with the patient, what you really expect. And in those cases, I think that uh, one, of the, uh, one of the options is, of course, uh, uh, putting an additional lens in the eye. And we have discussed in this symposium what the value is of the Rayner sulcoflex in the solution of the refractive surprise. And actually, there were a couple of case presentations that very nicely addressed that if you put the sulcoflex in the eye, uh, or thorax sulcoflex that you can get rid of the uh, residual amatropia after the primary surgery. I'm with Professor Wolfson, who just made a presentation in the symposium entitled Refractive Surprise, the Big Taboo. Dr. Wolfson, can you tell us more about your presentation and give our readers a little more interest in what, what you presented? Sure. So I was talking about uh, biometry, and obviously biometry is one of the big reasons other than complications for getting refractive surprises, and a little bit about the technology and how it's moved on from things like ultrasound to optical low coherence interferometry and partial coherence interferometry, which give us just much better readings, so uh, accurate to a hundredth of a millimeter rather than a tenth of a millimeter, um, keratometry and how we've tried to improve that. Of course, you've still got to have a very good tear film, so it's really important to get people to blink before you take your measures, but the cornea contributes two-thirds of the power of the eye, so um, very important that we get that contribution right. Also, effective lens power, and that's a, a real challenge, because of course we can, with some of the better techniques, say we see where the lens currently is, but that doesn't tell us where the IOL is going to sit, and people have tried to improve that in our formulae. But also there's subjective refraction, and of course that's our gold standard, what does the patient want? And that quite often differs from objective refraction. So even when we get all of these things right, sometimes we find that patients still aren't happy, and we need to make some adjustment after the, the lens has been implanted. Um, um, so it is a big taboo in terms of there's some real challenges still for us to meet. Um, some of the technology is moving us that direction, but we also need things like innovative IOLs to be able to overcome this. Today we're with Dr. Mark Cherney from Australia. He just attended the symposium, the Refractive Surprise, the Big Dad Boo. Do you agree with the topic? I mean, complications coming up that weren't expected. Is, is that really the taboo? Uh, it, it certainly is something that nobody likes to experience, but we all do. Uh, even if sometimes we try not to think about it too much. Uh, one of the points that was made is that there's no point the surgeon being happy with the result uh, and telling the patient who's not happy that there's really no reason to be unhappy. If the patient isn't happy, you do have a problem and you have to acknowledge that and address that. And I think that was one of the very important uh, points that was highlighted. What was your take home message from this symposium? Uh, one of the things that I haven't done previously was utilise the Sulcoflex lens for toric uh, residual errors and uh, to see a case presented with an elegant result certainly will uh, stay in my mind as an, and particularly for patients who are older or may have ocular surface disease where a corneal laser may not be uh, such a good idea and may lead to dry eye problems. Today we're here with David Fraser from the UK. He just attended the symposium, uh, Refractive Surprise, The Big Dad Boo. Do you agree with the topic that unpredictable outcomes, are they really a big taboo? Well, unpredictable outcomes are really predictable. I mean, uh, Dr. Lundstrom's presentation showed that about 1% of patients have a potentially correctable refractive surprise. And, um, and we've been presented with an excellent uh, technique here to uh, correct that. Um, anyone who can do cataract surgery can put in a sulcoflex lens, it would appear. There were several case studies presented during this symposium. Which one did you find most interesting? Um, I, think, I think they're all um, very much the same. The, the, the principle is identical. Uh, the, the degree to which we have refractive surprise in cataract surgery uh, varies. Um, the, the lens was used in 
in the context both of um, a spherical um, refractive surprise and, and also astigmatic surprise, and uh, the lens appears to work well for both. My own experience would match that. My last question is, Rayner took a different approach this year to their symposium. In the past, they've done a lot of product-driven. This year, they went more clinical-driven. What, what were your impressions of this actual event? Oh, I think the event was excellent. The symposium was, uh, was well-run and uh, well-planned. Um, I, I think the extent of the problem was, was very well shown from the European database on uh, refractive results in cataract surgery. And um, we, we, as I say, we, have, we, we now have an excellent uh, technique for dealing with this. Um, uh, you know, in the past, we've been shown laser surgery as a, a possibility for uh, treating refractive error. Uh, not every cataract surgeon has access to a laser, whereas everyone has access to this technology. Um, so the technology has come of age, I think. Um, it, it, it's been about for long enough. We've, we've, Michael Ammon, I think, reported this uh, use initially about five years ago. And um, if there were major problems with it, we'd have heard by now.